A new CBS News series is looking into the Trump administration's co controversial remain in Mexico policy and how it impacts asylum seekers. The first installment of this three part series is called Leave Me in a Cell, the desperate pleas of asylum seekers inside El Paso's immigration court. Uh, Camilo Montoya Galvez is uh, a CBS News reporter and he's the author of this series and is joining me now from Washington. So when I hear leave me in the cell after we've done a lot of coverage about just how terrible some of the conditions are in uh, some of these facilities, the fact that some migrants would rather stay in the cell than return to Mexico, I think is saying something. You conducted interviews with migrants, with advocates, with attorneys. How is the remain in Mexico policy impacting thousands of families seeking asylum? Right, and, and Maureen, thanks for having me. So I spent a couple of days, as you mentioned, in the El Paso sector of the border. And one of them was at the immigration court in the city's downtown. I observed more than a dozen hearings from asylum seekers returned to Mexico under this program. Uh, and the, migrant, the migrants' praise in this controversial program are temporarily allowed into the U.S. They're escorted into court, but most of them do not have lawyers, right? They're mostly families with small children or single women, and they're uh, brought to court uh, by uh, the Department of Homeland Security, and the pleas they make inside the courtroom, man, are nearly identical. They always ask the judge not to return them to Mexico, where they say they fear for their safety. But the judge always tells them that he has no authority to take them out of the program and to allow them to stay. So, Anne, almost all of them are returned to Mexico after their hearings. And the Trump administration calls this the migrant protection protocols, right? But the the accounts I heard in El Paso really paint a picture of a program that places often vulnerable migrants, right, like I mentioned, families, uh, single women, in really dangerous situations in Mexico where, this is important, Anne, the chances of securing uh, counsel are very slim. So listen, the title is a quote. It's a quote from a, a migrant uh, from Guatemala, leave me in a cell. As I mentioned at the top of this, you know, we've covered what conditions are like in some of these facilities, and they're not supposed to be that great. But I've also seen what it looks like on the other side of the border. And you can tell me, but I, are there any facilities? Is there anything on the other side of the border when these uh, migrants seeking asylum get, get escorted back? Yeah, so most migrants stay in shelters, you know, that are run by community organizers and the local Catholic Church, right? Uh, neither the U.S. government or the Mexican government are providing them with, with shelters. These are community-run uh, housing. And so, um, you know, just imagine, right, we, we saw this Guatemalan mother just essentially ask the judge to lock her up in a cell. That's how desperate some of these migrants are, right? They'd rather uh, be uh, detained uh, in a border patrol station then uh, be uh, sent to Ciudad Juarez and which uh, as we mentioned in our story is one of the da most dangerous cities not only in Mexico but the Western Hemisphere. So you talk about these migrants appearing in, in front of a judge and they're basically almost always sent back. Is this Correct. appearing in front of a judge just a formality or is there anything that they could say that would ensure them a place here on this side of the border at least while they wait for their claim of asylum to be processed? Right. That's a great question, because under uh, U.S., so domestic and international law, uh, the U.S. government is not supposed to return asylum seekers or refugees to places where they may face persecution. So every time the asylum seeker says, I'm scared of going back to Mexico, the judge is supposed to instruct uh, the government lawyer in the room to refer that asylum seeker to a uh, non refoulement interview. It's a term, basically, like I laid out, that you're not supposed to return asylum seekers to uh, places where they may face persecution. But advocates and lawyers tell me that you know, the interviews that they undergo are pretty much a sham, because even after they undergo these interviews and tell them, oh, my son was almost kidnapped in Juarez, like one uh, mother told me, they're still sent back to Mexico. So now we're learning that this Remain in Mexico program is going to be expanded across the entire border, because right now it's just sort of in one, in one area. Um, the people that you've talked to, how do they feel about that? What do they fear will happen? 
Right, so uh, as you mentioned, the Trump administration is really betting on this program to deter migration, and they say it's working, right? Uh, apprehension numbers over the last two months have dwindled since that record high in May, although, you know, many point also to the summer heat, but they're really betting on this program, which Ken Cuccinelli, the acting USCIS director, has called a spectacular success. But advocates, on the other hand, are really worried, right? They believe that, you know, in, in a couple of weeks, you're going to have about 60,000 asylum seekers wed waiting in dangerous Mexican border cities uh, for their court hearings in which they might be denied asylum, right? So it, it, for them, uh, the biggest concern is really the livelihoods and, and the experiences of the migrants uh, while they're waiting in Mexico. So we've got uh, parts one and two. Uh, it's part of a three-part series, but so we have the other two parts that are already online. What's coming up? What can you uh, tell us about the rest of the series? Right, so in the second part, we, which uh, we just published this morning, we're going to hear about the specific case of this indigenous mother from Honduras whose husband was murdered there uh, because he was part of an indigenous group. She, you know, journeyed through uh, Central America and Mexico and sought asylum at a port of entry. She, she did not cross illegally. She sought asylum, which is a legal right, at the port of entry in El Paso and was returned under this program. And during her wait in Ciudad Juarez, her baby boy was almost kidnapped. So we're going to hear a lot about, about the dangers that these people face while they wait for their court hearings. And, and, and I recommend that uh, everyone reads it, because it, it is a, a very uh, nuanced uh, and, and telling account of what these migrants really face in Mexico. Yeah, we need to hear their stories. Camilo, thank you very much. Thank you, Anne-Marie.